What's going on with AI? Now that's a question I get asked every day from learners to leaders to employees to entrepreneurs. They're really keen to understand how to convert this technology into real value for their consumers and thus their businesses. And they want to understand how to be ahead of the AI maturity curve, whatever it takes. Now, I'm not an expert, so I'm glad that I'm here today at ServiceNow's executive circle in Mumbai, spending time with two stalwarts who have gone on to redefine the way AI is transforming our lives. And it's my absolute honor to introduce both of them. First up, someone who's witnessing firsthand how AI and Gen AI is transforming not just customer, but employee experiences worldwide as SVP of enterprise and field marketing at ServiceNow. Nalina, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here in Mumbai. And next up, one of India's most well-regarded and recognized voices in technology and somebody who's leading the AI adoption in this country, the MD of South Asia at NVIDIA, Vishal. Thank you so much. Delighted to be with you. Lovely. How are both of you doing? Doing great. A little Supreme. bit jet lagged, but we're we're happy to be here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad that I have you. you know, despite all your hectic schedules, I know that this is really important. But thank you so much. I'll start with you, Vishal. Of course. Uh, firstly, you have been, of course, uh, seen so much in the last several years, and you've been with Nvidia for a fairly long while. Particularly when it comes to marketing, how do you believe that AI is transforming what is happening at the enterprise level worldwide? Yeah, we need to look at. AI from the lens that we are manufacturing intelligence for the very first time in the history of mankind. Think about it. $3.1 trillion software industry is now going to create intelligence. In just about last 10 to 12 years, there have been many, many breakthroughs, quite a few phenomenal breakthroughs, but two stand out. The number one that stands out is the transformer. The transformer basically allowed us to understand the representation of structures. We're able to scale learning. We're able to understand not through one mode, but multiple modes, what is the source of information? What is the structure below it? What is the meaning of it? Be it text, audio, video, image. As a result of which, we are now able to do everything beyond languages, image, video, even to a sequential protein, sequence of amino acid. The second big thing that has really happened, which happened a couple of years back, was fundamentally taking one modality to the other modality. You could take text to audio, audio to video. Think about taking text to proteins. Mm -hmm. Think about marine drive. Think about the pollution on marine drives. Now, because of understanding of amino acids, you're removing the plastic. And this basically brings us to a stage that I can, in whichever modality, in whichever form, create intelligence, understand it, and more importantly, make a difference to me, to the society, and to the nation. Wow. <clears throat> Very profound. I, I love, I had goosebumps when you said manufacturing intelligence, because that's so well put. And now when you think about it, that is precisely what's happening. Uh, Nalina, when you speak about enterprises, almost everyone's talking about digital transformation. Yeah. Uh, tell us something that's happening at ServiceNow, particularly when it comes to AI transformations that will enable these enterprises to go through the digital transformation that they seek. Yeah, I mean, at ServiceNow, we consider ourselves the intelligent platform for end-to-end -end business transformation. So we wake up every day thinking about how we can drive intelligence into every organization. Now, we recently had a new um, ServiceNow release called Xanadu, which has a lot of AI functionality. But I think the power of that functionality is really supercharged by the incredible partnerships that we have in the industry. Now, I'd be remiss to not mention NVIDIA first. NVIDIA is such a strategic partner for ServiceNow in ensuring that we can drive enterprise AI at scale across every organization. So this allows us to drive integration across functions and departments at a rate of change that we hadn't been able to before. And we've seen that our customers are able to spin up AI projects in as little as four to six weeks on the platform, which is driving a lot of change for these organizations. Secondly, AI is only as good as the way you can interact with it. And so in a world where we're seeing so many apps in our day-to-day -day work life, it's important that some of those apps become easier. Mm. So we have a recent partnership that's now live 
with Microsoft Copilot. Now, Microsoft Copilot, obviously a trailblazer in the space as well, but we want to be able to partner with Microsoft Copilot and ServiceNow Now Assist to ensure that ServiceNow AI information can be collaborative with Microsoft Copilot and show up in the apps that many people live and breathe in every single day, whether that's Teams, Outlook, PowerPoint, and that's been really exciting. Fascinating. I, I love that. I love that platform approach because that's almost giving that control and yet giving them the direction at which their transformation would happen. Fascinating. Um, Vishal, in your role, and that's a pivotal one at NVIDIA, I'm sure you're interacting with leadership who are equally nervous about AI as well as excited. Tell us what role do you believe leadership plays in aligning AI with the business goals of the organization, the enterprise? What a nice question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish everyone who needs to hear this is listening to you right now. <laughs> I guess so. And what leaders need to do is to understand these three ingredients. Firstly, every company is unique. You are unique, I'm unique, the company is unique, and we need to encode that uniqueness. For that, we need to really understand the pipeline of data. How do you basically create that pipeline? How do you crunch it? How do you munch it? How do you blend it? A leader needs to know this. Secondly, because of the algorithm and the models that get created, you have to have a fair idea that what is your vision and how that needs to be applied. And thirdly, the entire computing fabric is reset. 60 years, a little before I was born, there was an architecture that was introduced in IBM 360. It's the same architecture that has followed this path from mainframes to mini computers to personal computers, even to your smartphones. That is at a reset. And thanks to AI, every single layer has transformed. You move from CPUs to GPUs, you went from instruction-based software to machine learning, you've gone from instructions to intuition. You've gone from retrieval to generation. And this needs to be understood by leaders. Then the larger question is, how do you do it? And that how is known to many people in any organization. That's the strategy. And humans know strategy. What you need to know, what you require to get it done. Absolutely. That's so true. That's so true. Love that. Uh, Nalina, ServiceNow and Oxford Economics has recently published the Enterprise AI Maturity Index. Um, I found that fascinating because, at least for me, this was the first time I saw something around AI maturity. It almost gives the organization an understanding of where they could be in that curve. Yeah. Tell us what are the key takeaways that an organization should be aware of according to this report and index. Yeah, when absolutely. So this, this was our first annual AI maturity index. But there's some really interesting insights that came from that report. That report surveyed about 5,000 leaders across companies globally. And it was evaluating people's maturity um, in the AI space across several different factors, whether that be their strategy, their ability to upskill their organization, and the approach they are taking to AI adoption. And what we found are there are only about 15% of those surveyed who are considered what we call pace setters, which means they're already using AI in their organizations today and they're realizing value. So that means there's a really large adoption gap. So that means people are talking about AI, but they're not sure how to actually make it real in their organizations. So we looked at the common denominators that we found in that 15% and what they're doing that's different than the rest. And there's a couple areas where there's a lot of commonality in these people. One is alignment. AI is fundamentally transforming the way our organizations work. So it's not something that can be done in a pocket of your organization. You need to have leadership buy-in at the top and it needs to penetrate across your whole organization. You need to solve the problems that are burning in your organization. And if you use AI to solve those problems, you're gonna find success, but it needs to be driven from a tops down and bottoms up. Secondly, it's all about making sure that your employees are ready for this change. Even with the face of AI, our employees are still our most valuable resource. So we need to make sure that we're giving them the skills that they need to rise to the change that's gonna be coming in the organization. So the ability to upskill your existing talent and potentially hire new talent that'll be ready for that change is gonna be a critical piece of seeing the adoption and the ability to drive success from AI. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. And, and I think that 
this will be part of the answer for my next question to you, Vishal, which is a leader were to truly exploit the potential of AI. In addition to what Nalina mentioned, how would you reckon they look at AI from uh, absolute potential maximization? One of the reasons that NVIDIA is leading the pace, because when AI was upon us, the realization was this is once in a lifetime opportunity, we decided that we needed to apply AI for the work that we do for the industry. And we built and understood and innovated what's required for AI. So our vision is extremely important. Vision attracts researchers and researchers require tools. And you need to provide them tools towards that vision. And a hard problem allows them to work on it for a long period of time, learn from it and apply. And we do absolutely get it that you don't have to wait for that vision to get completed and then apply it to the rest of the organization. You need the whole organization to be encouraged that come, let's apply it to almost every use case that you can think about it. Ultimately, what are we doing? We're taking a digital transformation, learning its representation, and we're trying to apply that to the biological world and to the physical world and creating that bridge. That's what leaders do. That's what leaders absolutely do. Wonderful. On leadership and ServiceNow is, of course, very centered on talent experience. And you also spoke of it. One recurring theme that usually people speak about whether, when it comes to talent is, is AI going to take my job? Are we going to get my redundant? So what would you suggest, Nalina, is the leader's role in fostering the right kind of talent and particularly the right kind of culture to make sure that the AI initiative and strategy that they have doesn't disrupt their lives yeah. and only complements. Within ServiceNow, we look at many different facets to do this, not only for our own internal organization, but also for anyone who wants to up-level their skill set to be ready for the jobs of the future. So we're highly committed to using online learning to driving this change. And the beauty of online learning is it's giving access to anyone who wants to be part of this change. We have a program called Rise Up, which is specifically targeting underrepresented groups who may not have had tech backgrounds, but right now, what's happening in the future of AI, none of us have been trained for, so why not start today? So Rise Up is gonna allow people to have access to online education that can help them be prepared for the jobs of the future, which ultimately contributes to a more diverse workforce, and there is so much proof that diversity in your workforce leads to better employee satisfaction, it leads to more successful businesses. So for us, we wanna make sure that we're creating a very equitable way to drive change and drive learning, whether that be through online programs, mentorship, training, networking, there's so much potential, but the role of a leader is to really make that accessible for their team. It, you know, when I, when I talk to both of you, and in fact, not even talk, just listen to both of you, it, it's, it is imperative that leadership is perhaps the biggest equation in this AI transformation. Right? You can think about, of course, technology, you can think about the hardware and the software as well, but at the end of it, if leaders do not adopt it the right way and they don't foster the right culture, have the right vision, almost everything will fall flat. And that I think will go on to differentiate the ones which will be the pace setters as against the one which will be the laggards, if you will. Absolutely, no change matter. management, I yes. think, is the hardest thing. People get afraid of change, but really, if you embrace change, it's the best thing. Actually, your CEO, Jensen Wong, had a brilliant quote at our knowledge conference in Las Vegas, and he said, the train looks a lot faster when you're sitting on the platform. It's going really fast, but when you get on the train, it's more manageable, right? So the first step is actually making a change, getting on that project, starting to get prepared for your AI transformation. And then the use cases will come, the next bit will come, but it's all about getting started and creating that change for your organization. There's no way I'm letting you go without answering this question. But if you had to hazard a guess, when it comes to enterprise, what are the emerging AI trends that we are bound to witness in the near future? I think physical AI for sure. Uh, as we learn to understand the representation of the information, what we do is to create biological world with the physical world. So I'm not talking about digital twins of the physical world. How do you take problem statements in a digital world, simulate those problems, understand what's going inside that, and then bring it into the physical world? Think about India. India is at a hub where a lot of manufacturing needs to come in. 
some of the key elements of those manufacturings could be in electronics, semiconductors, electrical vehicle batteries. Now, are you basically going to put up these gigafactories without basically having understood what needs to be done? But if we understand biological world, create a bridge to the physical part, not only will we do a good job of creating it, but every time there's a change in the physical world, you can feel the heartbeat change in the biological world. You can change the biological world and implement into physical. I think that's what next 10 years is going to look like. That's fascinating, that's fascinating. My last question to you, Nalina. Enterprises thrive on connection with customers and with AI coming in, it becomes all the more easier, but also challenging because this is a rapidly changing world, yeah. as we all admit. So what do you believe will be the nuances that marketing will go through when it comes to enterprise connection with customers? Yeah, I mean, we are feeling a big shift in the way we interact with customers already. In marketing, we're using AI in a lot of interesting use cases. So right now, we've introduced AI agents um, that came in as part of ServiceNow's Xanadu release. Now, AI agents are unique because historically, you needed humans to prompt Gen AI. But now AI agents have the ability to access, have credentials, to access data, to actually exhibit action. So that's a whole new world of connection and collaboration because now AIs and humans don't just coexist, they actually work together, they're productive together. And in fact, AI agents are not limited to just speaking to humans, they can interact with other agents. Um, so we can use AI agents from a marketing perspective to do some of the dirty work in the background when we're thinking about campaigns. So looking at large amounts of data to understand how a campaign is performing, sentiment analysis of a customer, changing the message on the fly in the background. A lot of marketing has to do with the response of the customer. And that historically took a long time to parse out using AI agents as almost our sidekicks to make sure that we get all that information at our fingertips so we can focus on the message that we're trying to drive forward is really unlocking a whole new world within marketing and sales and collaboration. Um, and the world of AI agents, as we've now recently introduced at ServiceNow, is helping us power that internally. And we look forward to seeing all the use cases our customers create um, with that technology. It's just changing every single day. Fascinating, fascinating. I think. When both of you speak and you come in from this vantage point of enterprise, which are early adopters, large adopters, and also large change makers when it comes to AI, you're literally witnessing what the next era in this world will be. I'm, as a retail consumer who has nothing to do with enterprise, I'm constantly just amazed and amused at how much this world is going to change as it is rapidly already. With that, we come to the end of this fascinating conversation. I certainly learned a lot. I'm sure you did as well. I want to thank Vishal and Alina. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your candid thoughts. It was a pleasure to have you. Such Thank a pleasure. You, Thank you Thank both. you. Thank you. Thank you.